Well, I hope, Bob, that things are not going to be too peaceful for this scheduled 12-rounder. Uh, I apologise for that London pronunciation, uh, but that's what they taught me to say at school, and Americans call it schedule, but I'll uh, try and use your words as we go along. And in the corner there with Muhammad Ali, Dr. Ferdi Pacheco from Miami, and of course the old faithful trainer, Angelo Dundee. And we're waiting now for the gloving up process. These gloves are brought in by the IRA Boxing Board of Control, put in this sealed box in the middle of the ring. Uh, they are in fact eight ounce gloves, but they tried to get six ounce gloves on these fellas, which I think may have been a little bit too tight for them. Trappings are over now, musicians out the ring, court jesters not required anymore for Muhammad Ali. Let's get down to the real business now. Scheduled 12 rounds heavyweight battle, Muhammad Ali and Al Blue Lewis. And the introductions will be made by one of Ireland's top broadcasters, whom I know that you know well in America, Michael O'Hare. Greg, will you agree that it's almost like a carnival atmosphere here? More than just a big fight, everybody's here having just a lot of fun. Well, it's that way. I would have thought everybody except perhaps Al Blue Lewis as it starts, but how, how wrong could you be? You never know. He might just come off the stool and really land one on the greatest chin. But it certainly has been a fantastic uh, atmosphere the whole time here. The Irish are very easygoing people here, I must say, and they've been taking these two fellas to their hearts as though they were both locals. So 
Show the Bob Trinity and Stewart to hole 16, please. And waiting very patiently there on the left of your picture is the referee, Lou Eskin, the editor of Boxing Illustrated. So we have a New Jersey referee with fighters from Kentucky, now Cherry Hill, New Jersey, of course, and from Detroit. Greg, have you seen uh, Lou Lewis working out while you've been here in Dublin? Yes, he's worked very hard with Ray Anderson, the very fast light heavyweight. The man, of course, who was the last one to take Bob Foster the full limit in a light heavyweight championship. So uh, Lewis has had to do a lot of chasing. He, he's hired uh, Ray Anderson specifically to impersonate Muhammad Ali, and uh, he's done pretty well with him. I notice over there in Muhammad Ali's corner that one of Lewis's seconds are just making sure they're not slipping any horseshoes into the gloves. Billy Kahn, who was here, who's been here all week with us, uh, said that uh, he gives Al Blue Lewis a pretty good chance simply because Lewis hits so hard. Well, I wouldn't want to argue with Billy Kahn. But anyway, here are the official master of ceremonies, Michael O'Hare. Heavyweight contest over 12 three-minute rounds. Between, in the red corner, from Detroit, Michigan, Al Blue Lewis. Two hundred and twenty-three pounds. As we weigh in this morning, Blue Lewis weighs two hundred and twenty-three and a half pounds, or fifteen stones, thirteen and a half pounds. Well, that's the British way of wearing it. 15 stones, corner, 13 and a half. The former heavyweight champion of the world from Louisville, Kentucky, Muhammad Ali. And there's Muhammad doing the uh, traditional prayer, although some of us here call it his dignity bit. He's refusing to turn round. He looks as though he doesn't want to look at Al Lewis. Or 15 seven and a half pounds. The referee, Lou Eskin. So now we'll down to the real stuff now. The start of the opening round. Muhammad Ali, Al Blue Lewis, and the referee is Lou Eskin, who's editor of Boxing Illustrated and also moonlights as a fireman in New Jersey. So he'll be able to extricate Lewis with professional care if he gets hurt. They're wearing eight ounce gloves. There was some discussion of wearing a six ounce glove. They're bright red. I must say it's a, a great clash to these black bodies of these two very big heavyweights. And there's Eskin now. First time that he's refereed this side of the pond. And the scoring system uh, is a 10 points must. And there will be no mandatory eight counts. And neither fighter can be saved for the bell. If it's in the middle of a count and the bell goes, he will be stopped and taken back to the corner. And they're just checking now there's not too much grease uh, the referee on Al Blue Lewis's face. And you, I think you've got to look at the height of Lewis there. He's about an inch taller, it would seem to me, than Muhammad Ali. So all set then for the big event here in Croke Park, Dublin. Dublin. So we're wondering now whether this head cold that Muhammad Ali has been uh, suffering, the Ali snuffle, is now going to be turned into the Ali shuffle. And we think that for the opening round, that Blue Lewis is really going to be a dangerous hitter he once dented Muhammad Ali's ribs in training, and that was for real in Miami a couple of years ago and got the sack for doing it. So once again, Muhammad Ali at his dancing weight, as he calls it, 217, uh, just a pound heavier than he weighed for Jerry Quarry. And 223 and a half, Al Lewis, that's uh, 13 stones 13 pounds and a half in British scale. Now Lewis knows he has to get right on top of Ali and he's, he's a rough customer and there's a lot of excitement in Lewis's corner to encourage him. And it looks as though Ali's teeing off fairly early. He just tried a left hand for size there and a left hook. I 
I think that'll be the pattern here from Ali, trying to keep Lewis at bay. This fellow has a long reach. And he's got to flick this left hand out there like a snake's tongue just to keep Lewis at bay. that Ali's showing a bit of respect anyway for Lewis because he's coming at him and Ali has to open up to try and stop him in his tracks. There must be just a slight fear in Ali's heart that this fellow couldn't bang a bit. It's a very small ring, not more than about 16 feet, an amateur ring. So there's no place to hide and that's for sure. as though Lewis can uh, reach him with that left hand as well there. Hey, I think that's as many punches as I've seen Ali take in an opening round anyway, as we thought that the opening rounds are going to be the danger spots for Mohammed. There's no fooling around tonight. These punches are, are really going at full strength. And that very weak bell at the end of the first round there on punches landed. Obviously, Ali stole that one on the 10 points must system. But I must say, there was no fooling around from Lewis. He was getting stuck in very early. And I thought that uh, Ali showed him a great deal of respect. And coming in the ring, who will obviously get a lot of whistles, is the young lady from Dublin. George Greg. McGovern has a round card, Reg. I think Harold Conrad must be a Democrat. Well, what do you know about that? And it's Virginia-born Betty McDermott, who works in a hotel here in Dublin. Well, I hope, uh, for the crowd's sake, that she stays around a while. So, Mahum, Al Lewis there, having the gloves just pulled tighter on there by Luther Burgess, uh, former fighter. He, when he was 19, he fought Willie Pep. Now, this fellow looks a very calm and collected customer. One thing's for sure, Reggie. He didn't come in there intimidated by Ali, just as so many of Ali's opponents do. Well, this seems an extraordinary rest period to me. It seemed far more than a minute. I think they had to wait for the young lady to get out of the ring. So, round two, and right away Lewis is off the mark with a left hook there that landed. Ali was just pulling his head back a bit, but he didn't get away completely. I'm wondering now whether Ali's changing tactics a bit by ducking down and trying to come inside that left jab. Uh, Ali teed off pretty good with the left hook there. And it looks as though he definitely has, if not respect, perhaps even a bit of fear that Lewis might come at him a bit dangerously and he's trying to take him out quick. There's no fooling around at all from Ali. There's no doubt that this fellow carries a bit of a whack in either hand, and I think uh, it would suit Ali. And, and Eskin now warning Ali to keep his punches up. I haven't seen that before in a fight uh, with this former champion. I've never seen him land a low bow before, and I've covered most of them in America, and, of course, all of them in Europe. Well, that's one right off the book. This is a very heavily padded ring, which is maybe one of the reasons why the, the dancing feet are not in evidence. Now, what's he trying to do? Is he, who's he trying to kid here, Ali? Is he trying to set Lewis up for the punch? Because he's certainly asking for trouble. They're backing him off to a corner, doing nothing. that left flick to the body and if Lewis tees off with a right hand counter he could be in trouble and he almost walked into that right hand shot by dropping his hands there I think he's got to pile up these left hands the whole time to take some of the steam out of Lewis and try and make him use those legs and tire him out very quickly. Looks like 
Mark Lewis takes a good shot. 30 fights and lost only four of them. And the corner from Lewis is saying, fire, let punches go, will you? But he's, he's not doing enough, Lewis. And a good combination there, right on the bell with Muhammad Ali. Well, he came out there after that, what I thought, fairly scary opening round. And it looks as though he was back in control again in that second round with Al Lewis here. Just a word about Al Lewis. He's uh, 29, comes out of Detroit and had uh, 30 fights, of which he's lost four. He lost twice to Leotis Martin, whom I thought was one of the best American heavyweights who never got a title shot, and uh, also to Bob Stallings, but he reversed uh, that decision against Stallings. And he's had 16 TKOs. Bob? Well, he's come to fight tonight. He certainly looked... Uh like a tiger in that first round. Uh, in the second round, uh, Ali uh, slowed him down a bit, uh, but Al Blue Lewis is here to fight, and Ali uh, has an evening's full work uh, cut out for him. I think part of the problem, Reg, is that uh, Blue Lewis is a big man. Now, I see the referee had to wait for that young lady to get out of the ring there. She was have to get out. They don't have a 10-second buzzer here as you have in America. So, to recap then, round three, in case you've just joined us, Muhammad Ali and Al Blue Lewis. And I don't think there's any necessity for me to uh, identify Muhammad Ali because if you don't know him, you must have been living in a cave. Muhammad Ali show. He's walked around in Dublin rather like a Pied Piper. The crowds and kids have followed him everywhere and just almost worship the man. And there's this uh, heavyweight happening now, really giving them some sparkle. I think he's taken a couple of Lewis's best shots and figures. I've got to get in, but he's not, he's not getting in his own way at all. And this fellow can cave a few ribs in, but he's calling him on again. This is exactly what he did with Jerry Quarry. But whether he can break Lewis up as quickly as he did Quarry is another thing. What do you know about this? Lewis is entered into the act, and he's doing it. It's tit for tat stuff here. Shots are a bit high with the right hand, catching Lewis on the temple. That'll make him difficult for him to think a bit if he takes too many of those on the top of the head. And hanging onto the rope there, uh, you're not supposed to do that according to the rules over here. But uh, they, I think they've parked the rule book at the gates tonight and left it all to Lueskin. Now he's really snarling at him, Muhammad Ali. He's putting his punches together with purpose now. They're trying to sneak these right hands the whole time. They're trying to get cocky with them. jabbing with that left hand, pouring with it a bit, like a man who's a bit uncertain of where he's going. I'm surprised he's backing himself onto the ropes like this, Lewis. I mean, he knows he can't get away any farther than that. He's in trouble. As we come up now towards the end of the round, it looks like Abid Ali wanted to pin him in his own corner to save the walk home. He's certainly, Lewis is certainly doing a lot better job than, for example, uh, Jerry Quarry did with uh, Muhammad. At least Lewis is in there, he's fighting, and certainly Muhammad is taking him seriously. Well, 
I was uh, in Las Vegas for that fight, but and I couldn't agree with you more. I thought Quarry would give him much more trouble than, than, than he did, but he didn't. And I agree with you that the, certainly these opening rounds, Lewis's bums have been coming. Uh, and it looks as though uh, Muhammad Ali has got to use the softening up process before he can catch up with this fellow. Of course, for, for Ali, uh, he's in good shape, and he's fighting the Ali fight, which is, as usual, superb. No question he is in good shape, and he's getting up well before the uh, round starts here. He's really waiting for that buzzer to start like this. So round four, then. And if you had to score at this stage, no question that Ali is in front. But not by the wide margin that we expected. Al Lewis's last fight was against that rough house, Oscar Bonavina, down in Buenos Aires. And word had it that Lewis was not only doing well, but on his way to defeating Bonavina, but he was uh, disqualified for butting. Well, if you butt uh, Bonavina in Buenos Aires, you've got no chance. Now, Angelo Dundee calling out to Muhammad Ali, give him the shuffle. I think he wants to mesmerize Lewis a little bit. He wants to be fighters to turn it on. That is, looks as though there's a statue being scrapped at the moment. now that Lewis is rooted to the center of the ring and this fellow is using this ring even though it is only about 16 feet square and the referee having a job to keep out of the way of these big fellows as well and it doesn't look as though it's had any effect yet on Lewis's leg and he's willing to throw bombs if he gets the chance telling you, this one's for real. If you're as close up here as I am, you can absolutely see those punches sinking into uh, Muhammad Ali's ribs, but he's tucking the elbows in fairly cleverly. And that really banged Lewis off balance. I don't know really whether he was hurt by that. He's certainly got uncertain legs, to say the least. But I wonder whether he just toppled him off balance or hurt him with that one. I wouldn't like to take it to try. feeling of frustration now from Blue Lewis as though he's saying to Mama but I'm an Ali stand there I want to hit you but he's too smart for that <laughs> Ali breaking the force of those punches tucking his arms inside and they're calling in Muhammad Ali's corner with Lewis is tired I wouldn't quite go along with that I understand that he's not a long distance fighter. But, but Ali is hitting him with his good shots and he's coming back. And I must say, I didn't hear the bell there either, but the uh, fighters were very obedient about that as they were having that rather hectic exchange there at the end of the round. Uh, that's what the old time fight chroniclers used to call a rather bumper affair. Yeah, that was some round. Uh, Ali uh, gave him an awful beating, and yet at the end there was Blue Lewis uh, coming back, while not quite as strong as ever, still plenty strong. Well, I don't get the impression uh, from that illusion that the referee is in fact in Ali's corner, and having said that, he's now going over to Ali's corner to uh, check with Angelo Dundee that he probably doesn't want him to put too much grease on the face or to get those gloves really secure. Outside the ropes there, and... Uh, needed when wanted is Dr. Ferdy Pacheco from uh, Miami who deals with any rare, I should think that's the most superfluous job in the business, having to attend uh, cuts for Muhammad Ali. So round five. And again this moves by Ali to switch these punches to the body now. He, using the body, hoping the head will fall a bit. 
Apparently Lewis's legs uh, look a bit uncertain and I think exaggerated too by this very soft padding under the canvas. But it doesn't seem to have made much difference to Ali Spring, I must say. I think he's doing that to try and make Lewis drop his guard a bit and then whip that right hand over. Continually picking his spot there. Just look at this, he's tacking him off. He's done it about a dozen times on the turn, that left hand, and they're really sinking in. They look like taps, but they are not. That's the punch he's looking for. I think he's using that left hand to try and get Lewis to expose the chin a bit. There it is, trying it for size, a, a downward motion. Lewis making no attempt to get out of that corner and hanging his chin out a bit like a lantern in a storm there. Now is he, Ali going to pile this one up in the fifth round? Well, I must say Lewis certainly looks a durable customer. I must say, Lewis certainly looks a durable customer. <laughs> and a wild swing there from Lewis caught Ali around the ribs, a little far back. Now that was the punch that he hurt him with in training two years ago. And that took just a little blow away from Ali, who was just skating that round until that one landed. And these right hands that are getting why doesn't Lewis get out of that corner yes he is as well I hope that he heard me because it really is ridiculous just to stand there and take them what a right hand that was the punch I think that Ali was looking for he teed off with that right hand he let the left hands go he softened Al Blue Lewis up we could almost read that the whole time there was no question and he's up at nine. Eskin has only got to nine. That seemed like 19 to me. And the round is over. Or is the fight over? No, the round's over. It's confusion here at the end of the fifth. We couldn't hear the bell. And referee Eskin is checking now with the Irish boxing officials if the bell, in fact, did sound. Eskin did not take the time, I don't think, from the timekeeper. He went on his own time. And it looked to me like more than nine seconds. No, no, Reg. I think I think Eskin was right. I think he uh, Lewis was up at nine, and then the bell rang. I think Eskin Fine. called it correctly. I'm, I'm sure the referee knew what he was doing. It's just that he seemed down so long, Bob, that I thought it had to be over. It looked like he was never going to make it. Well, this is not replay. This really is a live sixth round now. And that's a question there where the bell did not save Al Lewis. It's the rarity these days. The referee counted to nine. The bell went and he stopped the fight and let us start again in the sixth round. And that is exactly what we saw with Ali. Softening up Lewis with that left hand and looking for that right hand shot to knock him over. There it is again, trying it for size. I doubt whether he can let him go this round because it's probably a blow to his pride if Lewis survives this one. It looked as if he was down there for two weeks. It really did. And again, the knees buckling there. The right hand did it. That punch went right to Lewis's chin and through to his boots. And now he's putting the combinations together. Clusters of punches the whole time. And it looks as though Lewis must take a chance to throw the right hands. He must try and keep Ali off.
It's a good job those ropes are there. I really think they are keeping Lewis up. It looks as though Ali can take him now more or less when he wants to, but he wants to do it very professionally and execute that right hand punch. No, that's not the way to do it. That was too short, but the left hook softened him up a bit more. Well, Lewis came in thinking that he could really pull off a surprise here, but they all say this, all except for the exception of Joe Frazier, the official heavyweight champion. This is his 39th professional fight, Muhammad Ali. He lost only one, of course, to Frazier, and the return, we hope, coming up. And this ba loose bandage on Ali's left hand, waving about there, I hope that uh, the referee takes note of that and just pulls it away. It's a bit, bit disconcerting. Oh, and that was the best right hand of that round. He caught Lewis flush with that. Half a minute in this round. And this loose bandage is exactly the same thing that happened in the quarry fight. And Lewis is coming back now. He's tearing off and fighting back. Well, what do you know about this? And they're really screaming in Lewis's corner for their man to go after him. And it's all over in the sixth round. That's the end of the round. And of course, the referee making sure that that bandage is pulled away. Well, I must say, full marks there to Al Lewis. He took uh, Ali's best shots there, Bob. And I was surprised, really, that he stayed the round after really literally coming off the floor there and getting the rosin dust on his back at the end of the fifth. Let, let's give the credit to Lewis where, where, where it's well merited. I mean, this is a man of tremendous courage. He, he was knocked down, as you say, at the end of the last round, and then he came back, he was dead on his feet, and he just kept coming. Well, they're working hard there in Lewis's corner now, telling him that it's not entirely a lost cause. Don Elbaum has been around the game outside the ring there and inside Luther Burgess, a former fighter, and the man who discovered him, Steve Eisner, who's a drive-in movie owner from Phoenix, Arizona. So the seventh round, scheduled of course for 12. So Lewis obviously wasn't quite the fall guy that Ali thought he was before the fight, and if we sold him a bit short, he's in trouble. But there's no question that we remember this fight as the man who was saved by the bell, which you don't see uh, very rarely in modern boxing. And there again, they're really breaking up. His legs are unhinging. The right hand, it was a bit high, that one, but now he's using the variety of punches. The left hooks are coming in and jabbing away to the stomach there. And all Lewis is trying to do now is that wing and a prayer stuff, hoping that he can just catch Ali as he comes in. A little bit carelessly, perhaps, but no, he's tucking that chin down, protecting himself the whole time. This fella is a very super boxer. You get the feeling as if you want to say to Lewis, well, at least throw a dozen punches all at once and see what happens, but he puts them just one at a time. He almost... Uh, sends a stamp with each one. And this is a no hit at this stage. No, they're back in again. And he keeps chopping that right hand down. That's what he called his karate blow. That was the punch that caught Sonny Liston up at Lewiston, Maine. That short overarm punch that shoots over the opponent's left hand. And it certainly must carry some weight. There it is again. He really is trying it for sides. It's as though he can hear me saying this. And Lewis really trapped in the corner there. And what a 
courageous man this Lewis is. He's taking Ali's best shots and he really has let his best punches go here. No fooling around at all. He's making a hard job of maintaining constant pressure. Now he has Lewis pinned in Lewis's own corner and Lewis's seconds really scream in there. Let some punches go. And he is, he's responding to that. So there's his broad shoulders of Ali in full flight and a left hook there that really rocked Lewis just above me. It's about three feet away from here. And again the bell then. Well, I must say, full tribute here, Bob, to the courage of Al Lewis. And he responded to his corner when they wanted him to come out fighting back. I, I just don't know how the man uh, is doing it. Uh, there's a limit to physical endurance. Ali is in great shape. He's really winging those shots. And there's Al Lewis taking them and coming back for more. Well, this is exactly what Al Lewis said he would do before this fight. He said, this fellow won't knock me out in a hurry. Uh, and he meant it, even though he hasn't fought since last October. So he's ring rusty, to say the least. Uh, that's mostly, I understand, because nobody will get in there with him. Although they may well do after this fight. But it looks as though they've avoided this fellow Lewis like the plague. And... Uh, I think there are times when we can understand managers doing that. Uh, Harold Conrad, the promoter of the fight, just whispered to me, uh, he just doesn't fall, and that's true. He's really standing in there. So we're into the eighth round, then. And it's just a question now whether this strong man, Lewis, can be broken up. I think probably there's a sign of frustration with uh, Ali now. Referee Eskin kept well away from him. Let him get on with the fight. He's only been needed really on the knockdown and uh, just once on a low blow from Ali. You know, Ali puts these punches together maybe half a dozen at a time and then suddenly uh, Lewis will let one go as he did then. But that was just cuffing past the Lee's face, actually. I get the message that uh, Lewis is not the kind of guy you'd want to fight in a dugout. He's getting a bit right-hand happy now, Ali. One after the other. There it is again, and as Lewis walks into him, he's, the momentum is even greater. I think perhaps uh, Lewis might start walking to his own right hand to avoid Ali's right hand, but he's staying static right in front of him and taking the punches. This fellow's got a lot of pride. looks to me that Al Lewis is earning that $25,000 the hard way, but he's in there a real professional to the core. No quittance with him. I think probably Lewis can't really understand why he can't land a punch really right on the point of Ali's jaw. And hanging on to the ropes there. absolutely amazing really because Ali just doesn't know what to do with him he's throwing his best shots he's landing them all and nothing is happening I think he'll have to speak to him rather severely if this keeps up and what do you know Lewis is coming back again I wonder if there's any possibility of Ali being shot no I wouldn't have thought so Bob yeah I tell you Reg uh, uh, Ali looks uh, as I look at him now, uh, in this corner, looks like he's bone tired. Uh, he still has uh, four rounds to go against a very, very tough customer. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, he'll be able to 
keep it up uh, because uh, otherwise uh, he's in with a very dangerous opponent. Well, certainly the rounds girls are getting tired. We've had to have a change of scenery for that uh, ninth round. The other one's been worn out by walking through there. There she is, the Irish Colleen. Uh, don't you think that everybody here thought it was all over at that sixth round? Well, certainly this commentator did. I'll tell you that, Bob. I, I thought there was no way that he could get up there. Uh, and I'm really am proud of this fellow because there's nothing I admire more in a professional ring than courage, and he has it. So that's the, the mouthpiece, or as they're called in Britain, the gum shield, just being poked into Lewis's mouth there. As we come up for round nine, scheduled for 12. And in case you've just joined us, it's Muhammad Ali and Al Blue Lewis. And Lewis was on the floor at the end of the fifth round, looked as though he was out for the world. And then the bell went and he was hauled back. And I must say, he's been putting up, uh, as we might say in Britain, a very stern show. Those fighters now sweating rather profusely in this rather cool night at Croke Park in Dublin. And now this uh, peekaboo stuff, you don't often see Muhammad Ali do that and he'll certainly get it with his next opponent, Floyd Patterson. And that takes place at Madison Square Garden. I'm wondering whether now Lewis, despite taking that punishment, has started to fight himself into a bit of shape. Because certainly everything uh, Ali throws at him, he totally ignores and tries his right hand. He's, he's copying the Ali stuff now. Uh, I think that's what's called taking a bit of a liberty. Well, there you go. Lewis is standing there literally toe to toe. There's just an inch in it there with these heavyweights. And it looks as though Ali's having a lot of trouble setting him up for that final payoff punch if it can come over. And it's not so certain that it will, because Lewis still having a go. And this is Ali now turning it on in all his glory. He's really looking the part now, but full marks for Lewis. He's punch swapping, but the right hand there on that chin. And the ropes are really holding Lewis up, but he's fighting back again. He's using them as a springboard. What punishment this man's taken and coming back. This will surprise Ali. He hasn't had an opponent do this, I don't think, since Joe Frazier. the most punches you'll see landed on Ali for a long time. And that real glare there with Ali, it looks as though he's really upset the way this fella's coming back. And what a round that was. That was one of the best rounds I've ever seen Ali involved in. Lewis just came back. He was out of it again. He came back and Ali may very well be punched out at this point, Reg. Well, I must say we, we've been building up uh, Blue Lewis all along for his courage, but there the, the fellow really started to put his punches together. He, he propped his backside on that middle rope and used it, I think, for leverage and then let go with some real hot shots and Ali was not liking that one little bit. And there was some consternation over there in the Ali corner during that round, I must say. They were saying, move and let the punches go, put them together. There he is now, the you man see, himself. You see, Reg, he came out, he was going to take a blow in that round. He was just going to try to get through that round, rest up a little bit. And then he thought he had an opening, and he kept punching, he took the gamble, and he may very well be punched out at this point. Well, this is now round 10, and I think it's the man who can impose his will stronger on the other at this stage, a survival of the fittest and of the big hearts and the big punch.
remember before the quarry fight, Ali couldn't put Mac Foster or Joe Chevalo away, but he is trying like mad with this one. I don't often see a fighter use the corners and ropes the way Lewis does. Uh, I don't think he's seeking a respite there. I really feel that they're handy for him. He has more chance of standing up. teeing off now with left hooks and it looks as though the sap really is running out of Lewis's legs but how can you tell he suddenly pulls himself together I feel as though there's a gate in those ropes that Lewis might open them and get out at this stage this round definitely is all Ali and he's picking every punch and making them count he's trying to break this fellow up for sure this round but as Bob said he's a little bit punched out there's no question there after that minute of action there he just needs the breather the whole time amazing man Lewis you get the feeling as though Lewis is saying okay let everything go at me when you've done it I'll come back at you but unfortunately Ali does not give him enough respite and these legs really are unhinging the whole time on Lewis they're just almost disobedient and his right eye is swelling Lewis a bit in this round round 10 and they're yelling in blue Lewis's corner try the right as you think he could try anything that's going but as he went into that one Ali timed it pretty well and that was a hard shot and that's the first time Lewis has really backed off and as though it was a sort of token of surrender, but only for a few seconds. And I think that bell must have sounded like an orchestra to Blue Lewis. Greg, let's say something about Muhammad Ali. What a fantastic athlete that man is. He was punched out, or at least it appeared to me, punched out after the last round. And he came back almost as fresh as he was before. Uh, this man is really something. He summons from the depths of his being an adrenaline, a power that rises to every occasion. I couldn't have put it better myself, Bob. And just to recap there, then, this is the 39th fight for Muhammad Ali and the 31st for this man, Al Blue Lewis, covered with this posse of seconds, really working hard. Luther Burgess, Don Elborn, Steve Eisner, as we come up for the 11th round. So round 11, and as Bob was saying, the way that Ali pulled himself together there, he's back up on his toes again. 30 years old now, but what a fantastic athlete he still is. He was out doing some road running only a few hours before the fight. I saw him on the golf course in his tracksuit. He was jogging away there. What a fantastic man he is, suffering a little bit from a head cold. But I think he sweated that out during the fight. But I must say, don't get any ideas that he has carried Lewis at all. He has let the best punches go right from the start. Lewis fighting all the time with his mouth open there, which is... Uh, a bad thing if he gets caught there, he could get his jaw broken, I would have thought. But with that huge mouthpiece in, he's got some chance of it bouncing up a bit. And now, I've probably Ali feels that some of that danger must have passed because he's back. What you may call the old Muhammad Ali, sprinkle it away there, really giving them the business. And it looks as though Eskin feels 
And that's enough. He's not going to allow Muhammad Ali to toy with Blue Lewis. But he's had the professional pride of finishing this fight on his feet in the 11th round. And I think the fantastic performance by Muhammad Ali and a great performance of courage by Blue Lewis. And Muhammad, and Muhammad Ali is being lifted on his shoulders there. You haven't seen that before. His brother, uh, Rockman, is lifting him up. And Lewis is lifting Muhammad Ali up. The usual situation in the ring where all chaos breaks up. Come on now, for Christ's sake. Muhammad Ali, the former world champion. And as always, this bedlam in the ring afterwards. Uh, it looks like the subway in the rush hour. People are treading all over our shoulders. They always do this, of course, at a big fight. And we have a great trouble here to get through to Muhammad Ali. He'll come across. I'll get to Ali in just a minute. Well, of course, this is the pantomime that we always see at these fights, and I, it really scares me the way people jump in and out the ring here, and I wouldn't be surprised if one of these nights it doesn't collapse under the weight. It really is uh, a hard thing, you know, even we commentators have to put up with something here at the ringside. We're getting kicked around and chairs are being pulled around. They're mobbing Muhammad Ali, they're shaking Al Blue Lewis's hand, they're pushing people off from Blue Lewis, they're a little bit tired. Uh, the man needs a rest at this stage.